Hi, I'm Deadpool, the other jolly guy in a red suit with a lap worth sitting on, here to tell you happy holidays. In the spirit of this most festive time of year, I've decided to release my holiday cheer all over the world. How, you ask? Well, you naughty stocking stuffers. So sit back, hold on to your ornaments, guzzle a little eggnog, at least that looks like eggnog, and prepare yourself because it's time for St. Wade to put the wind in winter wonderland. Welcome back, everyone. Maximum Effort, the actor who plays Dopinder and Ryan Reynolds himself just revealed a canceled Deadpool and Wolverine movie that they were about to make at Fox. It was going to be a Christmas movie, so we'll break it all down. And fun fact, Santa Claus is actually a Marvel character. Because honestly, actually, to bring it back to Roshan, on our first date, I recapped the plot of Deadpool 3, which I wasn't supposed to. This was a Fox version, which didn't get made uh -huh. because the studio got sold or whatever. Yeah. We had just met and I was desperate to impress him. And I just blurted the entire thing. I told him Hugh Jackman was going to... This is like years before. So all to say, I didn't get a script this time. Thank God. I have nothing. So they didn't even tell me the trailer was coming out. I got to watch it when yeah. it came out. And I'm excited to be a small part of it. Are you allowed to say what the version that didn't get made was? Yes, I think it's online a little bit, so maybe I can, but it was going to be originally a road trip movie where Deadpool tries to save Christmas. So we all go to the North Pole. <laughs> it was the week before Christmas and all around town, b-ball fans were dying to watch LeBron, Steph, and Russell throw down. You should bring back the short shorts. Who wears short shorts? I do. I wear short shorts. A basketball miracle right here on Christmas Day, stuffed into our stockings by the jolly NBA. Join us for games. Oh, and something else cool. In between all the dunks, a sneak peek of Deadpool. We hope you've been nice. We're about to get another Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. Of course, I'll be doing videos for everything, so be sure to subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. The actor who plays Dopinder said that he basically explained the plot of what that movie was going to be to his girlfriend at the time. This was before the Disney buyout went down. Good thing they hadn't actually given him a physical copy of the script, so he hadn't signed an NDA yet, so they couldn't sue him out of existence for revealing the plot of that movie. But a Deadpool and Wolverine Christmas movie might seem familiar because we just got the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special with all those Marvel characters. The big coincidence with that movie is that it's basically Deadpool and Wolverine going on a road trip to save Christmas, essentially. We're doing Deadpool and Wolverine right now in the MCU, so it sounded like Ryan Reynolds had been trying and successfully was able to get Hugh Jackman to actually be in that movie if they were about to make it. Deadpool and Wolverine. This just feels right. Recently, Ryan Reynolds explained that they wrote and prepared a secret Deadpool movie in 2018 a couple years ago after Deadpool 2 had been released, and they were going to release it during the Christmas season, but it got lost in the shuffle, he says, when Disney bought Fox. A lot of movies of all kinds that Fox was working on were canceled during that period a couple years ago when the buyout went down, not just the Fox Marvel movies that they had planned. The only difference in that one is that it was going to be a much smaller road trip movie with just the two of them, Easy Rider or Midnight Run style. And now the Deadpool 3, Deadpool Wolverine movie, is meant to be a much bigger multiverse movie incorporating elements of the Fox Marvel Universe, the main 616 MCU, the TVA, Mobius, other characters from Loki. And it's more in the vibe of Deadpool kills the Fox Marvel Universe. Marvel's already released a couple trailers, and Ryan Reynolds even released a teaser trailer that he used inside of one of his other teaser trailers to confirm that that version was one of the versions in the multiverse that they'd probably be visiting during the movie. Ooh. Wow! Um... God, Mr. Lively couldn't be here to accept this broken Emmy, so he sent me on his behalf. One of the benefits of using the TVA to bring him into the MCU is that they're just going to be visiting a whole bunch of different universes with different versions of the characters. I've already done a bunch of videos about that, so I'll link them in the description below. The Deadpool Christmas movie would have been much smaller in scope, and it would have taken the place of Once Upon a Deadpool, which was their consolation Christmas movie. Why the holidays? Thought it'd be fun. Why PG-13? It's a family movie. Also money. Also Disney. But it wasn't really a legit Christmas movie, it was just a PG-13 cut of Deadpool 2 meant to be released so that they could earn more money, families could buy extra tickets for the younger kids that normally wouldn't have seen Deadpool 2 because it was rated R. And they just released it during that Christmas holiday later that same year in 2018. Hollywood has had this weird thing the last several years where they started releasing movies multiple times really quickly, looking at you Spider-Man No Way Home, Extended Cut, and Avengers Endgame. But to be fair, in those cases, like, we did get a bunch of extra footage of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, which was a lot of fun. We should do this again, like, all hang out. It's nice. Yeah, for sure, yeah, it's a good idea. I'll just grab your number at the end of the, the battle. 
the plot of the Deadpool Christmas movie would have been much more about actual Christmas, like a legit Christmas movie, as in Deadpool versus Christmas, Deadpool versus Santa Claus, Deadpool saves Christmas kind of vibe. Deadpool is like Spider-Man in that he winds up creating most of his own problems that he then has to fix during his movies. And the funny thing about Santa Claus is that he is a legit Marvel character. He's a very powerful Omega level mutant. He's supposed to be one of the most powerful mutants on the planet. Like we talk about mutants coming into the MCU during Marvel Phase 4, Marvel Phase 5, Marvel Phase 6. We just met Namor inside Black Panther Wakanda Forever and he's another mutant who's been alive for the past 500 years in the MCU and we're just learning about him now. Santa Claus being a mutant is Marvel's way of explaining how he accomplishes all of his tasks that he does during Christmas night bringing toys to everyone around the world. The biggest Deadpool versus Santa Claus story actually happened when a bunch of angry kids around the world hired Deadpool to kill Santa after Christmas comes and goes and nobody gets any toys. When Deadpool goes to actually kill him, he finds out that Roxanne is the real reason preventing Santa Claus from performing his task giving everyone toys, so he goes and he gets rid of the problem at Roxanne, and then Santa lets Deadpool give out all the undelivered presents to all these kids, and it becomes more of a Deadpool saves Christmas kind of story. His very first appearance in Marvel was during 1954 during Strange Tales number 34, and it wasn't like a traditional Marvel Universe kind of story with characters that you normally recognize. It was just a random scientist encountering a version of Santa Claus in real life. He didn't really become an actual traditional Marvel character in this sense until Marvel's holiday special number one in 1991. The reason why Marvel made him a mutant is because around the 80s, early 90s, the X-Men were becoming the most popular comic at Marvel, most popular characters, so they're making crazy money on all their X-Men stuff. No coincidence that Marvel decided to bring back X-Men the Animated Series, which I'm doing videos for right now, like we just had the first couple of episodes. I'll link those in the description below too, because it's actually been really solid. To me, my X-Men. In fact, it was because of X-Men's popularity in the 90s in that TV series, X-Men the Animated Series, that Fox decided to make the X-Men 2000 film. That was the one that they thought was the most commercially viable at the time because X-Men were so popular at the time, leading to the creation of Hugh Jackman's version of Wolverine in the first place. Because they were bringing in so many readers through their X-Men titles, Chris Claremont would do fun bonus one-off holiday types of stories. Really easy for brand new readers who weren't familiar with the continuity to just pick up. So you have like your main Phoenix arc sagas that are super popular, everybody loves them, but then you have all these new readers just jumping on with these one-offs. After he wound up leaving the title and Scott Lobdell took over, he wrote Marvel Holiday Special number one in 1991, and that's where he turned Santa Claus into an actual mutant inside the MCU. During that story, the X-Men are decorating the Christmas tree, celebrating the holiday at the X-Mansion when Cerebro detects the most powerful mutant it's ever registered, and they discover that it winds up being Santa Claus, like he's a real person and secretly an Omega-level mutant. The X-Men follow the source of the signal before they know that it's Santa and find the Brotherhood of Mutants who also show up there getting the same type of signal. After they battle it out, Santa Claus shows up and uses his power to turn the Brotherhood of Mutants into action figures and then explains who he is and what his powers are. There have been a couple different types of stories with Santa Claus across Marvel Comics, but during this era, his powers were immortality, telepathy, telekinesis, teleportation, weather manipulation, matter and molecular manipulation, and gravity manipulation. So basically he could destroy the entire planet then completely rematerialize it and everyone in it with a snap of his fingers to make an Infinity Gauntlet reference. Speaking of which, there is the famous story of Santa Claus wielding the Infinity Gauntlet that everybody points to. That's also a one-off Marvel holiday story that happened a little bit later and during that story it just picks up with Santa Claus already wielding the Infinity Gauntlet, fighting the Illuminati and he's more the antagonist. Once they calm him down and he comes to his senses, he apologizes for what he's done and explains the only reason why he assembled the Infinity Gauntlet was so that he could perform all of his tasks as Santa Claus delivering presents. And Iron Man winds up helping him out by making a bunch of Stark Tech reindeer bots that will help him do it, like a bunch of Iron Legion Ultron bots, but that are reindeer. The way Ryan Reynolds talked about his Deadpool Christmas movie made it sound like it was like a really huge, really expensive type of movie. So I actually think that Marvel would be better off releasing it as a holiday special one-off in some future year, like the next couple of years at some point. Really good example of this was the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, which was made to set up Guardians of the Galaxy 3, just generally a lighter tone, smaller movie. A Deadpool Christmas movie would totally be in the same type of tone, like it's just a small, fun, one-off type of story. It's a little bit easier for Deadpool to get away with stories like that, especially the more jokey comedic stories, just because of the way the character is built. And the funny thing is that David Harbour, who is now Red Guardian in the MCU, he's going to be in the Thunderbolts movie in a big way. 
He just made a Christmas movie in real life where he plays a version of Santa Claus. It's called Violent Night, so it's more of like a hardcore Santa Claus. So it just feels like they have all the ingredients for like a really easy, really fun, one-off, small Deadpool holiday special Christmas type of movie. You may remember several years ago now when they released the first Deadpool movie, because it came out in February around Valentine's Day, they spent most of that previous Christmas holiday promoting the movie with the 12 days of Deadpool. It was probably one of the best marketing campaigns I've ever seen. The actual plot of Deadpool 3 doesn't really have anything to do with Christmas specifically. It's more of a Deadpool kills the Fox Marvel Universe kind of story, more of a larger multiverse story. Like the whole idea that Deadpool had Cable's time travel device and was messing with all the timelines at the end of Deadpool 2 in the post credit scene, and now the TVA is getting involved because he just continued doing that and things got worse and worse and worse, and he started to destroy the timeline and it caused larger ripples across the multiverse, and that's why the TVA is getting involved. I'm sure when the movie comes out, there'll be a lot of questions about how it ties in with the events of Loki Season 2. It's meant to take place after Loki Season 2, so God Loki exists in the middle of the multiverse here, so I fully expect to see some jokes about Loki at some point during the movie. But if Marvel actually does make a Deadpool Christmas movie or Deadpool holiday special, let me know in the comments what you want them to do during that. Which other characters do you want to see from the MCU? They could just do it with a couple of Deadpool characters. You don't need a ton of characters for that. Or they could turn into a much larger thing like that original Marvel holiday special where they introduce Santa is an Omega level mutant. Seriously, it'd almost be a bad idea for them not to try something like that. Everybody click here for all my Deadpool and Wolverine videos and click here for all my X-Men 97 episodes. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one in maximum effort.